have another story for you today. This is my fifth grade story. Do you remember my first grade story? The creation of the universe, how God created the universe. And the second grade story, the coming of life. What about the third grade story? The coming of human beings and the special gifts that human beings have. You remember? What about my first story? The story of communication in science. You remember? Today I have my fifth grade story. The story of numbers. The story about how we got our numbers. Human beings needed to be able to talk to one another, to share their ideas and their stories, and so they had a language that they spoke. And then the other day, we had a story about the symbols that they started to write for their language. That's the story of communication in science that I talked about. In the same way, they needed a kind of language for their inventions and for their creations, for their measurements. They might have needed to track how far they had walked or how many children they had, how many people they needed to feed, how much food they needed. So sometimes we don't know exactly when or who first thought of a language for numbers. But right from the very beginning of time that human beings have been on earth, we can imagine that they needed to talk about quantity and about numbers. How much food did they need to bring back in order to feed all of those people? How far it was to go to the river? When will the fruit come again on the tree or trees? All kinds of things that involve numbers. So, however far back we go to find out about people who lived a long time ago, long, long time ago, we have never found a group of people anywhere who didn't have some words for numbers. Some people in their language just had numbers for one and two. Everything else was many. Others in their language just had words for one, two, and three. One group of people who lived in what is now called South America didn't have any words that were just for numbers. But to mean one, they used their word for alone. Everything else was many. Because there aren't any written records, so we can't go back to where the language for numbers first began. But we think it, we think it very likely that people first needed numbers for counting. Now, there is one method of counting that has been used by many people all around the world, and that is using the fingers. That makes sense, doesn't it? We always have our fingers. And we, we normally use them to count. When you want to do your addition, sometimes you know you use your fingers. And sometimes when you want to use your subtraction, you use your fingers. They are handy. But other people used other things to count. Some people have used pebbles or stones. Some people have used sticks. 
Some have made knots in a rope. Some people have used shells or fruit. Other people have made notches on a stick and counted in that way. People in Malaya used stones. You can see them. One stone, two stones, three stones. So they will make a pile of the appropriate number of stones to keep track of whatever they wanted to count. For example, if they went out hunting and they saw a herd of animals and they wanted to be able to go back and tell the rest of the group how many they had seen, well, they would see the quantity in front of them and they would take one stone to represent each animal and then they could take that pile of stones back to the group and say see there were this many notches and sticks were used in the same way by other people one notch for each animal seen was made on the stick just as it seems likely that people were talking for a long time before they started to write their language down, it seems very likely that they were using numbers and quantity for a long time before they started to write numbers down. When did writing of numbers begin? Well, we have some records that help us know a little bit about what happened. About 5,000 years ago, there was a group of people called the Sumerians. There were another group like the Egyptians and like the Phoenicians. The Sumerians could read and write and they also had marks for their numbers. Their writing has been called cuneiform writing because of the shape of their writing. You see, there was a lot of clay in the area where they lived and so they used this clay to make tablets, flat pieces of clay and then they made marks on these clay tablets using a stick and then the clay dried. A lot of these clay tablets have been found. The Egyptians lived at about the same time as the Sumerians. Remember we talked about the fact that the Egyptians were farmers and they grew a lot of crops. They were very successful farmers. So they sold a lot of food products and they needed very large numbers. So they made their own symbols for their numbers both large and small. The Babylonians came a little while after the Sumerians and the Egyptians. Look at the Babylonian numerals. You can see how they wrote their one. Look at their turn. And look at the multiplication there. 60 multiplied by 10. Look at how they wrote that. And look at how they wrote their 23. Remember the story we had about writing and the sandpaper letters? that I said the Greeks took the letters that the Phoenicians had developed and changed those letters a little bit? Well, they must have liked doing that sort of thing because they also took the numbers and changed the numbers a little bit. 
Then the Greeks decided to make their own numbers. They decided to write a map for the number that was the first letter of their word name for the number. This is what they used as a symbol. For example, their word for five was penta. So they used the first letter of that word for their symbol for five. The Greek word for ten was deca. And so they used the first letter for that word as their number for ten. This was how they wrote the first letter, the penta, and then the letter for the attend deca. So this was how the Greeks presented their numbers. And look at the word, how they represented. 2857. You can imagine a Greek child doing multiplication with this kind of representation. It's a little bit complicated, isn't it? Well, that was what a Greek child did. Then you remember in our story about the letters that the Romans got the letters and they changed them a little bit? Guess what? They did the same thing with the numbers. So we have Roman numerals. And Roman numerals are still seen in some places. Clock faces sometimes have Roman numerals on them. When you go to the museum, look at all of the clock faces and see which numbers have Roman numerals on them. You might have, you might have one at home with Roman numerals. Another place you will see Roman numerals is on the outside of certain buildings carved into the side of the building telling us what year the building was made. So you might look and see if you can find those on any building or buildings. Have you seen this kind of numerals? These are the Roman numerals. See how they wrote their file. You've seen some of these numerals, haven't you? And look at how a Roman child wrote 1983. And again, you can imagine a Roman child doing addition, subtraction, multiplication with this kind of representation. Thank you.